she flew 30,000 light years to get that uncut Latin and she was gonna get what she came for. Hey gorgeous, welcome back to another episode of Moisturizing with the Extraterrestrials where we talk moisturizer and alien abduction. I'm your host Caswell and on this week's episode I'm gonna tell you all about the abduction of Antonio Vias Boas who was abducted by aliens in Brazil on his family's farm in 1957. But before I do, please like this video, most definitely subscribe, and please bang that bell so you'll be the first to know when I drop a new video. I'm going to be telling you the very intense story of Antonio's abduction while using the Youth to the People refillable minis kit. I'll also have a full review of the products at the end of the program. So are you ready for Moisturizing with the Extraterrestrials? Hey beautiful, it's nice to be back. I know it's probably been like three weeks since I've dropped an episode and to be honest with you, I just wasn't in the mood. I was more than content staying under my covers with my dog, sleeping for about 16 hours a day and I really just couldn't pull myself out of the rut. I wasn't in the mood to talk to anybody on the phone, deal with business. I certainly wasn't in the mood to do any research on alien abduction but you know, I'm getting it together. New life, new me. I'm gonna shoot an episode right now, do something real fun. I got a new head on my shoulders now. Not only am I gonna be bringing you more moisturizing with the extraterrestrial story, I'm also gonna do some stories about murder and women who kill. And right now I'm organizing a Women Who Kill Wednesday episode. So stay tuned for everything. I'm really excited for the new year and bring you some magic as often as possible. But you know, I'm human so sometimes I just need to take a break from sitting in front of the camera and editing and all that stuff. But I'm back and I feel good. Also, if you like this robe, it's made by Hologram City. The link will be down below. Hosa, who owns Hologram City, is like my right hand. If you've seen most of my music videos, he's always helped me with the styling. And I, if you pay attention to my Instagram, you'll know that Hologram City had a horrific fire in their manufacturing building and they lost all their sewing machines and it was just a real mess. Thankfully they were able to save a lot of the merchandise including this robe so if you go to Hologram City and you purchase something you will be helping them move into a new space, get new sewing machines and get back in gear for 2021. Okay that said. So Antonio Villas Boas lived in San Francisco de Sales in 1957. He was 23 at the time. Very handsome, young, Brazilian man who was going to school to be a lawyer but he actually lived on the farm with his family. His family was a little bit more well off and other farming families because they actually had a tractor and if you had a tractor and you had a farm you were a big deal. So while he was going to school he used to work on his family's farm but he used to do his farming with the tractor at night to beat the heat. So he would be like farming from like 10 p.m. at night until 5 in the morning getting all the work done so when the sun came up he could go to bed and get ready for school. So the date is October 16th, 1957. Like I said, Antonio was 23 years old. He's farming at night. It's about 10 o'clock and he's on his tractor and he's doing his normal plowing work. Sidebar right now, I'm using the Yerba Mate Resurfacing Energy Facial from Youth to the People Instant Microdermabrasion Enzyme Treatment. So he's on his tractor and he's tracking along, you know, and he looks up and he sees what looks like a red star. And he's like, wow, red star, I've never seen one before. And then he keeps looking at it and then it like stops and then it comes closer to him slowly and slowly. And he realizes if this is a star, it's definitely following him and it's getting closer. It's like, this no longer looks like a star. And all of a sudden it's about 40 feet in front of him and he can make it out to look like a flying saucer. Now, first I go any further, I want you to know that this is actually one of the first cases ever of an abduction and UFO sighting that ended up getting into the media. This actually happened five years before the Betty and Barney Hill case. So he had absolutely nothing to compare this to. So when he's trying to describe what this UFO looked like, it just looks like something out of this world and he's never seen anything like this before. He says it's like an egg shape with like a pop-up dome on top. 
And as it comes down, three legs start to unfold from the bottom of the spacecraft. And he sees it and it lands right in front of him. And there's two red lights in the middle. He sees like a ladder that comes down and beings start coming out of the spaceship. Now he's not watching for long because he gets really, really scared. I just want to say that in this picture and how he described it, you see a ladder. And to me, a ladder seems real primitive for someone that comes from 30 light years away or whatever like you would think it would be a ramp or would just come i don't know a ladder just throws me off do you feel the same i don't know this would be a really great time to like and subscribe so what does he do he jumps on his tractor and he starts driving away and i don't know how fast a tractor can get i assume it's not as fast as a car but i don't know but he starts going on this tractor and he's driving as fast as he can then all of a sudden the tractor just stops completely shuts off so he jumps off the tractor and he starts running just like i had to run to sephora to get the kale and green tea spinach vitamin superfood cleanser from youth to the people because they had sold out and they were saving one bottle for him anyway so he starts running and then all of a sudden right in front of him he sees this being so this being is about five feet tall he has these silver coveralls from basically head to toe and he's wearing a helmet but he can still make out his face we'll get to the face in a second but he had these these tubes that like went from the back of his neck to the back of his back <laughs> and that that apparently seemed to be where he got his oxygen from and but he could make out his face and he had like a humanoid face with like these bright, bright, bright blue eyes. Now what's really interesting about what these humanoids look like is they had very proportionate bodies. It seems like nine times out of 10, when someone gets abducted by a UFO and they come in contact with the gray, the grays have very unproportionate bodies. Like their arms kind of go down to their knees and they got like these big ass stomachs, these tiny shoulders, and these big ass heads with these tiny necks, but this was totally proportionate to what a five foot tall human would look like. Another thing that was different about this abduction was almost every abduction I've ever heard of, the beings start talking to the human with telepathy, but these beings, or humanoids as Antonio called them, started like barking and making these yelping sounds. So obviously Antonio is in a little bit of a pickle right now. All of a sudden these three other humanoids that look the exact same come up behind them and they grab him and they carry him back to the spaceship. Now I was really curious how they got him up that ladder, but he didn't go into details about that. So they got Antonio onto the ship and the first thing that they did was they stripped all of his clothes off him and they wouldn't let him go anywhere. They held him down and then they put this like lubrication jelly all over his body, like head to toe, like didn't miss an inch of his body. So then they led him into a second room and on the way into the second room over the door, he saw these like red symbols that he couldn't make out, but he could draw them perfectly. So he's still lubricated. They go inside the second room and it's like the shape of a semicircle and inside the room there were even more of these symbols in red on the wall. And this is where they decide to test his blood. Now I think this is really strange because you know typically if someone's going to test your blood, you know, they, they, they go for an artery in, in your forearm or I don't know, maybe your leg, I don't know. But they took blood from his chin. And so they, they, they cut a part of his chin, they stick a needle or something like that in there and there's a, a a tube and he's there to pull the blood out of his chin and that just seems like so strange to me like this why would they assume to take blood from his chin just, so at this point they take the blood from his chin they're covering him up with this lubrication and they push him into a third room which is a pretty basic room from how he described it he didn't say there was really anything to it but then all of a sudden this gas started coming from somewhere in the room and just filming up the room. He had, he had no choice but to inhale it. He started getting really sick and he's like shaking and he's vomiting. They leave him in there for about an hour. Then all of a sudden the door opens up. So he looks up, he sees what appears to be a naked human female looking beautiful walks into the room. And speaking of beautiful females, this sounds like a pretty good time for a free psychic reading for Amanda Lepore, don't you think? I'm getting a message from beyond the grave, from Prince. Prince says, if you're going to party like it's 1999, wear a mask. Oh, and get out of his vault.
So he looks up and he sees this beautiful blonde female. Now, based on his drawings and how he said that she looked, he said that she was about the same size as him, had platinum blonde hair, big titties, but she had, get this, big blue cat eyes. So I think this cat lady actually looks like Jocelyn Wilkinson. Then he said that she actually had bright, 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 bright red pubic hair and armpit hair, like shiny, bright. <laughs> Look, I haven't been with a white guy probably since like the towers went down, but I think that, I don't know, like I one time I hooked up with somebody and he just had like the brightest red nothing against gingers okay but he had just had the brightest reddest pubic hair and it just really threw me off i don't know maybe it's just me i don't know that was the adaptogen soothe and hydrate activated mist and i'm almost done with it all right so let's let that mist sit there for a second. So he, so Antonio found himself to be very attracted to this female. And so, so she started getting really aggressive. Like she wanted to have sex with him and he was all about it. She flew 30,000 light years to get that uncut Latin and she was going to get what she came for, right? So she gets on to him and she's drowning him. And he's like, so Antonio is really, really passionate about sex, like that Latin lover, you know? And so she's, he's trying to kiss her. And she's like, no, 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 no. And she like refuses to kiss him. So then she just starts sucking on his chin and nibbling on his chin. Now, this is kind of gross for me, and I'll tell you why. First of all, he just got blood taken from his chin, so you know he's got some like dried up blood there and a little bit of a gash, and here she is sucking on that cut on his chin, and that's just nasty any way you cut it, like completely unsanitary, like don't lick other people's blood. Sorry if you're into that, I'm not trying to kink shame, but that's really unsanitary, and then on top of that, don't you hate it when you're like, you know, having what seems to be like normal expected hot sex with someone and then they start doing something really weird to you like licking your eyeball and you're like oh. like that's just totally what it reminds me of if you're into eyeball licking i'm not I'll tell you right away call me vanilla don't care so, and then on top of that she has these bright red pits which i just think is really strange <laughs> I'm gonna offend somebody no matter what I do, to each their own. So yeah, she's nibbling on his chin, sucking on his chin. And so he's trying to have a moment with her, you know? And so he's like trying to like snuggle up and do this. And she w she wasn't having it at all. She just came for the seed and then she was gonna bounce. And then she didn't speak to him at all. No moaning, no groaning, no nothing. But then after he came in her, she says that she like pointed to her belly and pointed to the sky to let him know that she was going to have their child up there in the stars. And he felt hella used. He was like, he's like, wait, you're just using me as a stud? You f bitch. So once he was done having sex with Jocelyn Wildenstein, four of those guys with the helmets on and everything, they come in and they put his clothes back on him. And for some reason, they give him a little tour of the whole UFO. I mean, at this point, he had already been in three rooms, so I don't know how much more of a tour he needed, but he said they gave him a tour. And he saw like this clock-like device that was somewhere like, I don't know, somewhere like on a shelf or something like that. And he tried stealing it and putting it in his pocket. And I swear, like, this is like the third time I've heard about someone trying to steal something on a spaceship. They always catch you. They can read your mind. They know telepathy. They know what the f*** is up. So give that up. There's no shoplifting here. Don't make me call security. And then they, they bring them downstairs. They put them out. By the way, this super berry hydrate and glow oil is amazing. I'm almost out of it. They drop him back off on the ground. They see the spaceship close up its legs. It flies back off into the universe. And he's like, what the f***? So he thought he was only gone for about an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes, but he was gone for a whole four hours. So he didn't know where the timeline 
So Antonio went home and he kind of sat on this for a minute. And at the time, he wasn't really thinking about telling anybody until a couple days later, he actually saw something in the paper from a journalist named Jose Martins, who was asking if there was anyone in the area recently had any type of experience with UFOs or missing time or alien abduction. So he responded to Jose and Jose put him in touch with Dr. Alovo Fontes because now it's only a couple days later, but Antonio is starting to feel really, really sick. He He's getting like crazy lesions on his body. Like if, as soon as he like hits something with his hand, he'll get a bruise and will turn into a lesion. His hair was falling out. He has a hard time sleeping. Dr. Fontes told him that he was dealing with severe radiation poisoning. Very often when people get abducted by UFOs and they have some type of experience like this, they have to go under regressive hypnosis to remember everything, but he had no problem remembering everything. Also, Boas's abduction happened in 1957, which was several years before the Barney Hill abduction case became famous, so he really had absolutely nothing to compare it to. So Antonio always stuck by his story, he never changed it, and he never made a dime off it ever. Also, this superfood air whip moisture cream feels really good on the skin. I'm almost done with this. So this story didn't go worldwide until about five years after it happened. He wasn't even trying to get it out, but I think the doctor had talked to some friends about it, so it ended up getting on the news. But it wasn't until five years later that people were really interested in this story. And Antonio never made any profit of it off this at all. Antonio became a lawyer, he got married, he had four kids, and he stuck to his story till the day he died on January 7th, 1991. So I know this is a little bit of a shorter story. There wasn't as much drama connected to the story as other UFO abduction stories, but I really wanted to tackle it because it was one of the first. Let me know what you think down below. Please subscribe, like, bang that bell, become part of the Caswell community. I'll be dropping more stories in 2021 that have to do with psychopathic killers. Look out for more moisturizing with the extraterrestrials. Also, a new show I'm starting called Women Who Kill Wednesdays. In about five seconds, I'm going to do a quick review on all these Youth for the People products I just used. And don't you forget, baby, it's your duty to be beautiful. Hey, beautiful, thanks for sticking around. On this week's episode of Moisturizing with the Extraterrestrials, you were watching me use the Youth for the People. I always want to say power to the people, but it's Youth to the People Refillable Minis kit and I gotta say my smile is genuine I was very very happy with the outcome of this product I was pleasantly surprised now I gotta say that based on the advertising and the social media that I saw for youth for the people I never thought that it was gonna be skincare for me based on the demographic it seemed to be aiming towards like it just seems very hi my name's Jasmine I'm 19 years old I've never had dairy I've lived in California my whole life I've been going to coach Cella since I was 12. My boyfriend Skylar just bought a new bong and I'm on my way to his dorm room to try it out with them. Like just not in my life, you know? But I went to Sephora and I was tr I wanted to try something new and I had heard about their kale cleanser and I talked to the lady and she's like, yeah, we sold out of it, but try the minis kit. I'm like, all right, I'll try the minis kit. So this minis kit goes for 60 bucks, which is a little pricey typically for like a tester's kit, but the five products in them all work amazingly, and I promise you, it is well worth it. First thing, Youth to the People is a very ethical, moral, and sustainable company. They are 100% vegan, cruelty-free, and all environmentally sustainable packaging. All of their products come in glass packaging, and they even print on vegetable-derived ink. So if you want to wash it off because you don't like it and want to use it for a vase or something, feel free. So let's start with the most popular product, which is the Kale and Green Tea Spinach Vitamin Superfood Cleanser. Now, first of all, this smells... Did I just smell it like that? <laughs> um, this smells like like spinach or kale, and you think that maybe, oh, it's a perfume or something. Actually, the scents come from the active ingredients. Now, I hear a lot of people say, oh, it doesn't really matter what you wash your skin with. You know, it's more about the moisturizer. It's more about the serum. Well, in some cases, that's true, but this has amazing ingredients that I could feel my skin benefiting from. First off, this cleanser has B5, which helps build your skin's protective barriers and helps prevent you from aging from the sun. It has vitamin C, and this also has alfalfa extract 
extract in it, which helps soothe your skin and also makes your skin look more bright and alive. There's aloe vera extract in here. And of course it has kale extract, which is one of the selling ingredients. Kale extract has vitamin A, B, C, and K, as well as antioxidants and phytonutrients. It will help tighten your pores, reduce dark circles, promotes collagen production, and increases cell turnover. This also has green tea extract, which is an anti-inflammatory and improves the appearance of sun damaged skin. Also, we can't forget spinach leaf extract, which is in it, and you can smell it, which is loaded with antioxidants, which will help destroy free radicals and rejuvenate your skin. Sometimes you put a cleanser on and your skin feels really, really tight, but I did not feel that way at all. This definitely made my skin very happy. If you're gonna be taking makeup off or sunscreen and want to double cleanse, I would use this as your second cleanser and start off with an oil cleanser. Up next is the Yerba Mate Resurfacing Energy Facial. Now you can just put this on for two minutes, let it sit there, wash it off. You can use it as a mask, you can use it as a scrub. They say just to use it two to three times a week. I would agree with that. I think I used it two times this week, maybe three times the first week I got this. Yerba Mate is known to prevent infections from bacteria and it's loaded with antioxidants. It also has bamboo extract. This definitely helps give your skin a good firmness and strength and it's perfect for acne prone skin. This is this was not too rough on my skin at all. Like when I felt it, like I thought it was gonna, smells good by the way, like I thought it was gonna be like, like, like close to an almond scrub or something like that but the granules are really 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 small but it does the job and it's really good for sensitive skin like like i have oh also this has safflower oil in it which is really good if you have flaky skin during the winter time and won't dry out your skin all right this bad boy right here i only have like two or three pumps left and i don't want to waste it i want to use it tomorrow morning but this is the aptogen soothe and hydrate activated mist the pentapeptides in this will help promote collagen production the reishi helps the appearance of redness and sometimes I get like redness right around here and I noticed that going down during the three weeks I was using this product so I'm definitely going to keep using it. It also like hydrates your skin and it feels so good when you put it on. This also has hyaluronic acid in this and if you were reading the ingredients you would think that this would make the perfect serum which it does but its delivery system is through a mist which I think is genius. So if you love serums and you want to double dip like use this as a mist and then put your serum on. I really could not get enough of this like if you ever put something on your skin and you can tell that your skin just loves it and you can see the benefits and feel it as you're spraying it on like this is what it felt like to me now if I sound like I was paid to do this because I'm really this happy I'm just passionate about skincare I paid the 60 bucks for this I'm just really thrilled that I discovered this brand so look if you need a little pick-me-up you're flying on a plane your skin feels thirsty spray this on your face you'll feel the benefits immediately but this is gonna be my next purchase when I go to Sephora as long as they didn't run out. Up next, the new love of my life, the Superberry Hydrate Glow Oil. Now, I love a good oil and I'm always searching out for the next one that I can try and this one is perfect because it's not too heavy, it's not too light. If you're just starting off and you want to try an oil for your face, I truly recommend this oil. The Maki Berry is an extreme anti-inflammatory and it feels really soothing on your face. It's super high in antioxidants. The Acai in this is rich in omega-3, 6, and 9 fatty acids which is just brilliant for your skin and your skin's protective barrier. The Goji Berry is super packed with vitamin C. It's also also barrier boosting and has essential fatty acids that will help soothe your skin. Last but not least, the Superfood Air Whip Moisture Cream Kale Plus Spinach Hyaluronic Acid. First of all, it smells amazing. Now, I wouldn't consider this a night cream. It's not very thick. It's very thin, but cooling on your face. When I put this on my face, my skin just seems to eat it all up. Like it soaks in really quickly. I would say use this moisturizer for like the summertime or just a daytime moisturizer before you put on your SPF. But if you're gonna use it at night, I would probably, I just like a thicker night cream. So I would use another thick night cream on top of this. I might look into see if they have a, a night cream, but this is a great day time skin cream. The hyaluronic acid is extremely hydrating. This also contains the kale, spinach, green tea, and alfalfa extract. So all in all, I just feel like I gave my face a nice salad to eat. You know when you haven't eaten all day and the first thing you have is like a green leafy salad packed with organic fruits and vegetables and you walk away from lunchtime feeling really good about yourself because you didn't have french fries and you're skipping back to work like that's how my face feels i can't say enough good things about youth for the people i just want to say to youth for the people that when you hear the name 
youth to the people. It sounds like you're taking the youth and you're bringing it to the people that need it. So that would be me. I'm telling you, my skin really benefited from this. And I think that you should push to an older demographic. You know, like if you're going to get some type of celebrity or somebody older to push your product, like a Jennifer Aniston or a Caswell, get somebody in their 30s, 40s, or 50s to really help push this product because I think that every age group benefits from this. Things like this can stay in your life for a long period of time, no matter how old you are. And I'm really grateful I made this discovery. So anyway, youth to the people. I can't say enough good things about it. Let me know what you think about it below. I recommend every product that is in this kit from the bottom of my heart. No one's giving me any money, but if you want to, feel free. But don't forget, baby, it's your duty to be beautiful.